to the book of Exodus, the third chapter, if you would. Exodus, the third chapter. Let's stand as we honor God's word by standing. I'm going to read verses 10 through 12. Exodus 3. Now, first of all, uh, let me say this before I read this, that if this is uh, God speaking to Moses, now, we don't know how God spoke to Moses. Uh, we don't know if it was through uh, uh, an angel or if it was an audible voice came down from heaven. We, we, we don't know how it, how it all happened, but let's, let me read this to you. Lord says, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, ever how he was speaking to Moses, and he said, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto, thy, unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of it. Thank you, Lord, for those that have come out this morning. We pray for those who, for some reason or another, is not here today. And Lord, we pray that you'll put it in their hearts and their minds that they need to be in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. And Lord, I just pray that you'll see fit to bless us in everything. Thankful, Lord, for you taking care of us Thankful, Lord, for you taking care and, and watching over all of us. We pray for Billy Ray, Lord. We pray that you'll see fit to go with him and strengthen him, Lord. And, and, and Lord, I just pray that you will uh, touch him and maybe even speak to him today. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Folks, I'm going to take my glasses off because I'm seeing better today without them. Um, I haven't had my surgery yet, so don't anybody think I know I look odd. Carson, you're laughing at me. <laughs> I know I look odd, but uh, I can't help it. I can see better without them. The title of this message is Listen for That Still Small Voice. Listen for that still, small voice. And we'll say it one more time. Listen for that still, small voice. I pray, it's been my prayer, it was my prayer before I started this message. I pray that every saved and unsaved person in this building would take heed to this message because it's important. A lot of times we miss out on a lot of things because we don't listen. We don't listen. You know, one thing you learn as a pastor, and I know some of you may say, well, uh, uh, um, I've, I've already known this, but it's one thing you learn as a pastor. You watch and you listen for everything that goes on around you. And you also listen when God speaks to you. And that's one of the things you learn as a pastor. I'll never forget old Brother Barnett, who's gone on to be with the Lord now. He, brother, brother Barnett, Earl Barnett, he came here uh, and he preached in our Bible conference several years ago. Un uneducated, he's like my dad. Brother, brother, brother Earl Barnett couldn't read and write, but he taught himself after he started preaching to read and write, to read the Bible and such, but he, he was at my ordination. He came several miles to be at my ordination when he heard I was being ordained to the ministry. I've known, I've known Brother Earl since a little boy. 
And uh, he, uh, he came to my ordination. And when I got ready to leave, when I, when I got finished, and, and when, when somebody asked the, the presbyter there, that had gathered together to listen, to question me. He said, does anybody else have anything they want to say at this time? And Brother Earl raised his hand and said, uh, I do. And uh, somebody said, Brother, well, matter of fact, the person that, inter that, that was uh, interrogating me didn't know him. He said, brother, he said, uh, what do you have to say today? He said, brother Jackson, he said, you see those doors back there? He pointed at doors at the back of the church building. He said, you watch who comes in those doors and you watch who goes out those doors. He said, don't you ever fail to watch who comes in and watch who goes out. Because he said, I'm gonna tell you, he said, You've got to be alert to everything that goes on in the church building. And that's where I took my advice from, was from him. And I've always tried to do that. I've always tried to listen when it comes time to listen. And I've, already, I've, I've always tried to uh, uh, learn when it comes time to learn uh, what it is. So I hope and pray that Every one of you in this building uh, heeds, listen, hears this message and, lead, and heeds to it. Please, whatever you do, don't treat lightly any whisperings of the indwelling Holy Spirit that's in you. Listen, say that one more time. Don't take lightly any whisperings of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Never. I know if the Holy Spirit dwells in you that he many times speaks to your heart about serving the Lord and what you should do. I know he does. If you've got the Holy Spirit dwelling in you many times, he's going to speak to you about how you serve the Lord and what you do. This is why I use this text because I don't know how God spoke to Moses. I don't know if he spoke to him by that still small voice or if he spoke to him uh, through an angel or if God audibly spoke to him from heaven, which God doesn't do that anymore. All instructions that God gives to his children is done through the indwelling spirit that's in them. Now, think about that for just a moment. I know, well, I've already said this. I pray that there is not one of you who have gone so far from God that he doesn't speak to you anymore in that still small voice. That happens. I want you to understand that happens. You know, when you go so far into disobedience and you go so far into, in, into backsliding, backslidden, when you go so far into that, God no longer speaks to you. Matter of fact, he told, his, he told the first gen, generation of people, he said, my spirit, my spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, will not, not always dwell, will not always uh, 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 take, I can't think of the word anyway. Uh, what's the word? Thrive. Thrive, yeah, my, thrive with man. My spirit will not always thrive with man. I couldn't think of the word. And he told that first generation, did I still say it wrong? That he said that first generation that's what he told them. My spirit will not always strive with man. It's coming back to me. My brain peels are working. But at any rate, not, not, not to be trying to be funny, 
This is a serious thing. When God quits directing you and God quits, quits dealing with you, then you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. And I'm afraid that a lot of people have gone so far away from the Lord. Well, even Moses here, if you'll notice in the text, even Moses here said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, Lord, I can't do that. Even Moses said that. Even Moses said when the Lord told him what he wanted him to do, Lord said, Moses said, Lord, I, I can't do that. And that's when God assured him. He says, if you do what I'm telling you to do, he says, I will be with you. And then you'll know that I have sent you. How, how do you think that all these years <coughs> that I have known <coughs> that God has me where he wants me? I told a man the other day, he said, how long have you been pastoring church over there? I said, uh, uh, I said, I've been pastoring those people. Some of them, I said, I've been pastoring them for nearly 36 years. He said, no. I said, yes. He said, nobody stays at a church that long. I said, they do if the Lord is with them. I said, if the Lord is with them, God blesses them while they're at that church. You know. Lord, Lord told Moses, said, you'll know that I sent you when it works, what you're about to do. We're going to talk about that more in just a little while. Every time fresh light is given to you and you don't turn aside and inquire, then you lose much which you may never gain again. In other words, if a preacher stands up here and preaches, there's, there's some people, this members of this church won't hear this today if they're not here. That's, that's to their detriment. Every time you miss the Lord's house, that's to your detriment because you've lost something. You lose things if you, if you don't take to heart what God is, when God is speaking to you, then you lose those things. And, and I'm saying this out of the way Moses was. God, God told Moses that they'll listen to you. We're going to talk about that in just a little while. And Moses said, Lord, I just don't know if I can do it or not. He said, all you've got to realize is I've sent you, and you'll know that. Some of the greatest spiritual treasures are found by following that still small voice which speaks to you daily. Some of the great things. How many times have I sat back there in that little room and, and, and I have shouted out, amen, praise God. God has shown me something. I did it several times this week. You need to listen. When he's speaking to you, you need not try to sway it away because this is not the way I want to go, Lord, right now. Not the way I want to go. I've had people who have told, who have said, uh, you know, are we going to get out of church early today? This has been said to me. We're going to get out of church early today. Why would you ask something like that? I don't know. I just want to know. No, they had something planned. Just like people's got things planned right now they're going to do. You don't know what you're going to get to do that. You might sit there and plan it. You might plan it. You might plan it. You might plan it. But you don't know that you're going to get to do that. I planned on going to Brother Troy's and preaching this year because they, he said you, your, your name was the first name brought up to invite to come and preach. But all that's been taken care of. I won't be there. 
I won't be there because I've got to have eye surgery. When the doctor told me that you've got to have eye surgery on the 5th of March, first thing I did was Brother Troy called me that same day when they told me that, Brother Troy called me that same day and was telling me about the Bible conference. And I said, when is it? He said, it begins the 7th. I said, Brother Troy, I got to have eye surgery the 5th and I don't think it's going to be good for me to try to come down there. He said, well, he said, you're going to be missed. But the thing about it is, folks, you never know. When God's speaking to you, you better hop right then. You better go do what God would have you do. You better not, better not make other plans. I'm telling you, it's a detriment to yourself. In our text, Moses got what God was saying to him. And what, what happened? He found the salvation of Israel. Of all of Israel, he found the salvation of all of Israel because he heeded what that still small voice or what that voice was saying to him. You might say, well, Brother Paul, I don't have that small, still voice speaking to me. Be careful what you say. You might say that, but you may not have listened to it when it spoke to you. You may have just ignored it. You know, oh, no, you know, that, that still small voice don't speak. You may have ignored it. That's the reason I said, listen for it. Listen, that's the title of this message. Listen for the still small voice. Listen for it every day. Listen for it every day. And I guarantee you, if you're saved today, God speaks to you every day for some reason. Through the still small voice. It, it may be someday... Someday, maybe, don't do this. God doesn't speak audibly anymore. I remember Dr. Roscoe Brong set a preacher down in, 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 in chapel in the seminary. The preacher got up there and he said, I was out on a mountain in, 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 in northern Kentucky. And, and he said, I was, I was out there and God started speaking to me audibly. And Brother Brong, you thought he was asleep. He always thought he was asleep. He always sat over there in the chapel services. He looked up and he said, what did you say, brother? He said, I was out on a mountain and said, God audibly spoke to me. He said, God doesn't do that anymore. He said, that can't be true. He said, it's best that you sit down. And he pointed me. He said, Brother Jackson, you get up there and preach. Let me tell you, folks, you've got to listen every day for that still, small voice. Listen every day. Be careful what you're saying when you say that I don't have that still, small voice. It could be that you're not listening for it. If you're not listening for that still, small voice, then you are following the flesh you're not following the Lord. You're following what the flesh says do. You're not following what the Lord says do if you don't hear it. It speaks to you every day. That still small voice speaks to me every day. It has every day since I've been saved. That still small voice speaks to me and directs me and tells me what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing. It was a great apostle Paul who said, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8 and verse 9. Now if you turn with me again to Romans. Romans 8. I want to read something else to you. In Romans 8. Now I'm going to verse, begin in verse 10. And here's what the apostle Paul says about what I'm preaching about today. He says, in verse 10, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raises up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. What do you think he's talking about there? Jesus died on, on, on Calvary's tree. 
They buried him, and some way, somehow, that still small voice spoke to him in that grave. Told him it's time to get up. It's time to rise up now. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the, of, of the body, ye shall live. Do that through the Spirit. Spirit is what speaks to you. You'll say, what causes me, what causes me to, to progressively be sanctified? That's the speaking of the Spirit to you. That's what does it. That's the very thing that does it. Jehovah God spake to Moses heart by saying, Come now therefore. Verse 10 of our text. How do I know that he spoke to Moses' heart? Because Moses listened. He listened to what God was saying to him. He heard God when he spoke. Ever how he spoke to him? He heard God when he spoke. All who would hear this gracious voice will humble themselves down and do whatever the Spirit inquires. If you know it's that still small voice speaking to you, you're going to do what that still small voice says. Or if you've done gotten so far backslidden that you can't, you don't pay attention to that still small voice anymore, that could be a case. That could be a very case right there. It was Jehovah God who spoke to Israel. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Isaiah 118 spoke to all of Israel. Now I know. How many, how many Israelites do you think existed at that time? I'm talking about now what he told Moses to do. There's somewhere between three and 10 million of them existed at that time. Well, it don't make any difference if it's a congregation of 40 or 50, or if it's a congregation of five or 600. You know, God is working in his children to do what he would have them do and what his plan and his purpose is for their life. And God does it through that still small voice. That still small voice, you know, some people think, well, that's the only time that still small voice speaks to us is when we're, Lord, beckoning us to be saved. That's not true. That still small voice keeps speaking to you. Isaiah 118, come now and let us reason together. He didn't say, come now, let us plot together and do what our flesh wants us to do. He didn't say that. He said, come now. And let us reason together. Let us reason together that this is the God speaking to me. And, and, and another thing he said over in that same text, he said, you're the one, Moses, that's got to speak to them. And they're going to know it's me speaking to them if you're speaking to them. He said to Moses, I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Moses balked a little before he knew what God wanted him to do. Jehovah God told him that he wanted him that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. <laughs> what a request. What a mission. Close to, some believe close to three to 10 million people. Maybe if it's just three million people, that's a lot of people. What a request. There were nearly three to 10 million people in Egypt 
Israelites. God knows, listen to this, God knows who to choose and who not to choose. God knows. You'll say, maybe God, maybe I don't, I don't have that still small voice speaking to me. It's because God don't have anything for you to do. God knows when a task comes, he knows who to send and who not to send. Just like old uh, Jonah. God knew who he wanted to send to Nineveh to preach those people. Come to think of it, God didn't say come to think of it. I made a mistake because I realized that Jonah won't, won't preach to Gentiles. That's the reason Jonah ran away from it because Jonah was a bigot Jew. He was not about to speak, speak to Gentiles because Jonah really believed that Gentiles couldn't be saved, just like Peter did at one time. But when God gave him that worldly education he gave him, he, he ran there. God knows who to choose and who not to choose. God speaks to those who he knows will do the job, for he gives them everything they need to do it. God said, Moses, I'll be with you. I'll give you everything you need to speak to those three to ten million people. Now, what, what, you, what would you think? What would you think if God sent you to speak to, say, a thousand people? I'd probably faint. If God had a thousand people out there and he told me, he said, I want you to be the speaker to those thousand people, I'd probably faint. When I was in, when I was in Illinois, I'd only been there three months, it came up Thanksgiving, November. And somebody came to me at the church there, at the uh, Salem Missionary Baptist Church. Somebody came to me in the church and they said, you know, you've got to speak this Saturday at the Thanksgiving meeting. I said, you, you're going to be the keynote speaker. I said, no, I didn't know that. And I certainly didn't know that when I got there that there was probably a couple of thousand people there. I didn't know where all those people came from. I didn't see that many houses around there. And I had to get up. I, I told everyone who told me that, I said, is it okay if I preach? They said, you just speak to them. You do, you do it any way you want to. If you want to preach a message, you preach a message to them. But you're, the, you're going to be the keynote speaker, and that's exactly what I did. Well, God knows who to sin, who not to sin. I could never understand why God called me to preach, but now I know. I could never understand it. Why, God, why are you calling me to preach? But I know now why. I know why he called me to preach, because he planned on using me. I'll never forget Winston talking to a preacher. Winston asked a preacher, said, how many people you had saved? He said, none. You know you hadn't had anybody saved? That's what Winston said. He said, no. He said, how many of you baptized? I haven't baptized any. You haven't baptized anybody? You know, Winston. He said, no. He said, have you ever married anybody? He said, no. You haven't married anybody? Then what do you do? Winston asked him, said, what do you do? I can never understand why God called me to preach, but now I know, for he, he has given me everything I need to do exactly what he called me to do. He's given me that. 52 years. Going on 53 years. 
be 53 years this coming May. Jehovah God reassured Moses when he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token that is an assurance unto thee. Verse 12. That word token is the same word for assurance. God always takes the place of our weakness in doing his work. God does his work through us. All the work that is done here at Landmark Baptist Church is done through you folks. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm the pastor. But all the work that's done here is done through you folks. You folks wouldn't have done what you've done except God spoke to your heart and told you this is what I want to do. I had a preacher one time, Brother Kent Clark, he and I was two that preached at Brother David's funeral. Brother Clint Clark, Kent Clark told me one time, he said, I learned a great lesson, Brother Paul. I said, what's that? He said, it's a lesson you taught me. And I said, what's that? He said, me not do everything, so let people do whatever God lead, leads them to do. He said, I tried doing everything. He said, it didn't work. Let people do whatever God leads them to do. God always takes the place of our weakness in doing his work. Apostle Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8 and verse 31. A lot of people follow their feelings more than they follow the Lord. Let me say that one more time. A lot of people follow their feelings more than they follow the Lord. What is my feelings right now? Well, I want to do this. Makes no difference what the Lord says in the background. I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow my feelings. What I feel is right and what I feel is wrong. Please don't ignore that small, still voice when the Spirit beckons you to follow the Lord in his work. The great apostle again says, most gladly, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How many people didn't feel very good today that came to church anyway? Yeah. How I many people didn't feel very good this morning? They didn't go. They found a reason to stay home. Paul also said, when I am weak, then am I strong. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 10 if we never understand God's calling us to work, then we are certainly without the Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, He is with every sent one. S-E-N-T. He is with, with every sent one. God doesn't send you that He's not with you. Moses was called by that still small voice, was told where he would land to service. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, God didn't say if you bring forth, he says when you do, not if you do, when you do, not if you do, when you do. God had no, God had no question about Moses' faithfulness to him. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain.
We must stand on the mountain with God. Listen to this now. We must stand on the mountain with God in order to get ready for the valley which is sure to come. That's why some people fall flat on, in the valley. Because they haven't listened to God when they were on the mountain. Just like today. You're on a mountain today. We always serve on a mountain. That's why the Lord tells his children. He says you go and you shout it from the mountaintop. Shout it from the mountaintop. That's what you do. That's what he tells his children to do. Shout it from the mountaintop. Because when you get in a valley. You may be in a bad shape. And you don't know how to talk and what to talk. You don't know what to do. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Ephesians 6.10 says. And I'm going to say, may God bless you today. And may God bless you from now on. Just listen to that still, small voice. That's all I ask you to do. Listen to God speaking to you. Don't try to get ahead of God. Listen to when God speaks to you. Stop. What was it Moses said in another place? Moses learned a great lesson. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Some of you maybe have never seen the salvation of the Lord. When I say that, I'm, saying, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying you've never seen the impact of the salvation of the Lord because you've had, your, you've had your flesh and yourself more in mind than you have the Lord. You're bound to do what you want to do and you don't care what anybody says about it. Reggie and Carmen, if y'all will come, we're going to sing a song.